Welcome to For Fox Sake, where we give zero fucks about money shame and talk about real life and finance, including the taboo behind it all. So grab your Monday morning caffeine and let's chat. Good morning, Foxton. Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you're all doing very well today. If you're new here, welcome to the Foxton. That's what I call my legion of 30,000 people online ready to learn about sustainable budgeting and anti-capitalist personal finance. Yes, that's actually a thing that exists. It's what I do with my days. So I'm very glad that you're here. And if you're an oldie but goldie, welcome back. I'd love it if you left me a review on Apple or Spotify. It really does help the podcast grow. This episode is going to be a rather heavy one, so here is your content warning. There is a trend right now on social media. I've seen it on Instagram and TikTok. And essentially, there's a picture of yourself, like a selfie, and the caption or the text on the image is, social media is fake. Here are a few things on my mind. And the things on your mind are things you feel shame or certain insecurities around. And the goal is to show other people that life is more than a highlight reel and that people have very real things they're dealing with outside of, you know, pixels. (laughs) Of course, I love this idea. I feel like I've done a pretty solid job over the years of being honest and upfront with my followers that life isn't all rainbows and butterflies. But there are definitely things I feel shame around, especially when it comes to money. Shame grows in silence and thrives off of fear, which is why I share about my previous marriage and divorce, my journey as a queer woman, my mental health disorders and hormone struggles, therapy, sobriety, and how entrepreneurship is actually extremely difficult and not just this gold path to riches and freedom that it's made out to be. So today's episode, I'm going to share five things I have been thinking about when it comes to this trend and money. Number one, I've never made more than $40,000 per year. I grew up in a middle class family, but my parents' spending habits made it feel like we were lower middle or lower class most of the time. And because of this, I was expected to go to college and get a good job to attain things they never had, like most millennials. So I busted my ass to get through college and I started working. And ever since I started my career, I haven't been able to make more than $40,000 per year. And that's a big source of shame for me. I want to say and acknowledge that making $40,000 per year as a business owner is not the same as earning $40,000 at a W-2 job. My business brings in around 100K each year at this point, but with taxes, overhead, independent contractors, and a partner's cut, that usually ends up being around $40,000 when you add in my extra income from gig work. And the reason I'm able to get by on this income is because I don't live an ostentatious life and because we have minimal credit card debt. We don't carry debt in any other form and we're working on paying off that credit card debt. I know in my head that my worth isn't attached to how much money I make, but sometimes it's very hard for me to hear that advice for my own heart. Number two, I don't have enough money invested. This is definitely more of a fear-based shame because being who I am and doing what I do, I see the data every single day on investing and saving for retirement. I know what I need to have saved. I know the future that awaits me if I don't get my ass into gear when it comes to retirement. I know that the majority of people don't have enough saved, and I am sadly in that camp. My 20s were focused on paying off debt, and because of that, I didn't prioritize investing because I was following Dave Ramsey. Then I got divorced, and my goal was to get through that, which was expensive, and the only reason I was able to survive that was because of the community that lifted me up which is a huge, huge privilege. After my divorce, the goal was rebuilding my life, which turned into building my business. (laughs) Then it was getting through the pandemic. Then it was buying a house. And as I've mentioned, I don't make that much money. So there's an opportunity cost that comes with that. It's actually impossible to pay for everyday cost of living and build up a business and invest and buy a house and, and, and. 
I do regret not making investing more of a priority. And I know that pretty soon I'm going to have to make it one no matter what is going on in my life. Number three, I worry about the cost of living constantly. Colorado is my place. I love it here. This is home for me. It's gorgeous. The politics and environment match our values. We have friends here and we are wanting to expand our community. Longmont is the perfect town for us and I cannot see myself anywhere else. And I know that part of that decision to not invest was intentionally spending quite a lot of money putting down roots here in this state. But this is an expensive place to live, way more expensive than Ohio or North Carolina. And I'm not delusional. We paid almost half a million dollars for a very small house. But guess what? That's what houses cost here. And the conditions that brought us into this house will never happen again, especially given the interest rates right now. So we took on that risk and we bought and decided that, that this is where we're going to be. But that does come with pressure on our marriage and on our income. We have to make at least $3,200 a month bare minimum. That's one bill. And as someone who lived a very frugal life up until now, that is scary and triggers a lot for me. <laughs> I will say one of the positives of that one bill has been realizing that we actually can do this. Even with Joe getting let go from his job and being unemployed this year, we are capable of taking care of ourselves. And that's been a huge point of pride. Buying this home was the ultimate value-based spending decision for us. And even though I do worry about the cost of living, I have to remember that. Number four is I'm scared I'm going to end up like my parents. As I said during the retirement portion of this episode, I know what it looks like to not save for retirement because my parents didn't. And now they're on a fixed income relying solely on Social Security. And I'll be the first to admit that my financial trauma stems from my upbringing and the complete and total lack of financial education and security I experienced. It's also very difficult for me to talk about this because as a Southern woman, you are conditioned not to speak ill of your family name. You know, I don't mind saying things <laughs> to my trusted loved ones, but it's very different speaking into a microphone, basically shitting on them for hundreds of people to hear. <laughs> I've talked about them in the past on social media and, you know, I've said different things, but I don't think I've been this blunt or upfront about it. I've been in therapy about my parents and my family dynamics and dysfunction for a very long time. And you may not know this, but here's some free therapy. <laughs> Defending your parents and deflecting your experiences by saying things like, well, it wasn't that bad and they loved me and they did the best they could and oh, they showed me how to do X, Y, and Z. And this is all a trauma response. So I am not going to do that because the reality is, is that they didn't do their best. I know this because both my brother and I begged them to change over and over again for years. We begged them to go to therapy. We begged my dad to lose weight. We begged them to get their money right. And it never happened. Either way, as an adult, I'm terrified. I am truly terrified of devolving into my parents who never traveled the world, who wasted money, who are still paying off their house, the only house I was raised in. And just the overall lack of desire or fortitude to do things differently in their lives. I am scared of always being broke, of not doing the right things with my money and not taking care of myself for the future and in the future. And this is a direct result of them. I love them, but that's a big pain point in my life. And I am still working through this and will continue to work through it. Number five is I can't separate Dave Ramsey and racism from my story. This is the biggest source of shame for me when it comes to 
me as a person away from my personal finance career and as a person who creates content for a living in the money realm. The reality is, is that I was born in the South. I was raised in the South and my family was and is racist. I have seen things that are horrifying. I have heard things that are horrifying. And I have experienced things that are horrifying as far as race and race relations. Especially when I was married to a sheriff's deputy. I can't separate that ignorance from my story. But I can learn from it. And I can do better despite it. And I look at who I am now versus who I was at 19, and they're completely different people. But that doesn't erase what I used to think and where my principles used to be. And the same thing goes for Dave Ramsey and how I acted towards people at the beginning of my debt-free journey. I was judgmental and downright cruel. To those who were not walking the same path as me, I was obsessed, I was toxic, and I was a bully. And I wish I could take back what I used to think about the world and how I let these things define me, but I can't. And all I can do is unlearn, reparent, and be an outspoken anti racist. There's a quote from Game of Thrones that I really love. <laughs> And it's said by Peter Dinklage, who plays Tyrion Lannister. And the quote is, never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor and it can never be used to hurt you. I am acutely aware of my faults and imperfections as a person, as a creator, as a wife, as a friend. I'm aware of it and I aim to do better every single day. And part of that self-improvement journey is being transparent about my fears, my shames, my insecurities, my past, and the ugly side of my life. And I want you all to know that sharing this is not easy, and I don't think it ever will be easy. But I do really think it's worth it. I hope you all have a wonderful week. I hope this episode makes you realize that you're not alone in your struggles, in your fears. (laughs) I hope you take time maybe this week to think about some of the things that you think or some of those things that you hold locked away and maybe work through them a little bit or at least speak to them. Because as I said earlier, shame lives in silence and thrives in fear and life is too short. All right, y'all. Toodaloo. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of For Fox Sake. If you want more content like this, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and threads at VFrugalFox. And don't be a stranger. I respond to followers and love feedback from my community. If you want to make my day and help this podcast reach more people, please consider giving a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. A special thanks to Kaylee Johnson, Heather Devoki, and Joseph Bogomel. See you next week. And remember, do it with an open heart and no attachment to the result.